We are live. Okay, I'm not. Oh, <laughs> it says we're live. <laughs> okay, it says we're setting up on my end. Um, redirecting to Facebook. Okay, now, um, I don't know why it said redirecting to Facebook. Um, Okay, my meeting says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So let's just get busy with this message. <laughs> well, I can't see. A, I mean, I see us on Facebook, but I don't see us on the Zoom thing. Do you see us on Facebook? Um, no, but it does say live on my end. Okay. Um, okay. Well, ladies, we're here, but we, I am very confused because we're using <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> and I don't know how to operate this where I can see Zoom, uh, where I can see Zoom on my Zoom Zoomer. <laughs> so I'm seeing everything delayed on Facebook Live. And I don't, is my voice coming in correctly? It is. Okay. It is. All right. Okay. You well, it's on which page? Do what now? Which page do you have us on? Um, it looks like I am on the Woman to Woman Ministry private group page. See if you can put us on some of the other pages. I, I've lost access to do that. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we can do that. So let's just go ahead and teach what we, uh, and we'll 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 share this somewhere, some way, some other way. <laughs> okay. Because we are live on Facebook right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Right. Okay. Well, I do feel a little handicapped because I can't really see what I'm doing other than the fact that I see the delayed reaction on Facebook, but we will just roll with it. Yep. So, um, okay. Let's open up in prayer and ladies, forgive us for being a little slow this morning. We're trying a new um, device. We're trying Zoom. We've been using um, a different device. And so we're a little handicapped because we haven't learned how to do it really good yet. Okay, so um, you want to open us in prayer, Robin, or you want me to open Yes, us in I will. Heavenly okay. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you. But we are here for a purpose. Yes. And the purpose is to share the good news of the gospel in its totality. Yes. Father, we ask you to be with us. We yeah. ask you for all those that may listen in. May they be blessed by hearing your word, God, that changes hearts, that delivers, that restores, that heals, that saves. Mm -hmm. And Father, we trust you in this work today. May you be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. yeah. So today we're talking about does Jesus still heal today? And I, I wanted to just throw this scripture out there and then just see what the Lord does. But Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Now that's in Isaiah 53, 5, but, but in 1 Peter 2, 24, it says by his stripes, we were healed. So in other words, we have been healed by his stripes. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? It is good. And Deborah, you know, I want to explain why we're doing this. I mean, I think you and I both have had a passion about healing for quite a while. Yes. And, and we don't really, it, sometimes it's hard to see um, people that really believe that God heals today. Yeah. And so we wanted to bring forth this, this plain scripture because it's not a mystery, is it? It's not it, a mystery. It, it, it's, I think written. it's written, but I think what's happened is the enemy is the master deceiver and he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And so what the enemy has done is he has made a uh, religious He's put a religious blanket basically on the church and blinded the eyes of, of a lot of the church to the fact that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And, and in our salvation, it, it includes healing of body, soul, and spirit. We are, we are a three-part being. Uh, we got Father, Son, uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and we've got our body, we've got our soul and our spirit, so we are made in his image. We got three parts, right? And, and God cares about all three parts, and I think the church has been blind, 
And so what happens is when, when this religious blanket is thrown over the church, um, the church people can't see it. They, they look at the scriptures. They see the scriptures that say that. They quote them. They quote them. <laughs> they sing them. They sing them. But they cannot believe them yeah. for themselves. Yep. And so, and I mean, and I, I can testify to that because I'm telling you the devil is crafty and he does the same thing to everybody, including me and you. Yes. The difference is that I think that what you and I, what our hearts are for is to be diligent, to go back to the word and say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. God help me to get my mind and my heart to agree with your word because I see your word. I say, I believe your word, but when the rubber meets the road and I'm scared, there's something inside of me that says, well, maybe not this time. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? and, and Deborah, I think, you know, we have to start on, you know, the, the, the word of God is clear. So what we want to start on is a, a sure foundation. The Jehovah Rapha, what does that mean? I am the God who heals. Absolutely. In Exodus, God declared, I am the God who heals. I am Jehovah Rapha. So yeah. the first thing that people need to realize, here's what people will say. They'll say, well, you know, Robin, that's Old Testament. Yeah. But here's what my Bible tells me. My Bible tells me that we are under a better covenant. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. under a more complete covenant. Mm -hmm. So if in the Old Testament, God says, I am the God who heals. That's his name. That's his nature. Mm -hmm. That's his character. Yeah. So when you understand in your head, because here's what, and we're going to get to some questions people have asked because people did ask some, some really good questions, but, oh, good. Okay. but what we need to understand first and foremost if it is his nature and it's his name and it's his character, then it is his will. That's right. That's right. I, I mean, we have to, we have to get to square one, zero. Exactly. <laughs> well, God is not a man that he should lie. And if yeah. he says it in his word, then for him to not have it as his will, then that would be a contradiction. How so that would be a teaser. That'd be God teasing <laughs> us. You know? And I don't like to be teased. Nobody wants to serve a God that, that teases them. That's right. right. You know, and, and God's not a teaser. God, he is who he says he is. He does what he says he will do. And he is, he's faithful. Now, there are obstacles to our healing. Um, some of it is just because we live in a fallen world. Some of it can be ancestral sin. Some of it can be our sin. Some of it can, and, and sin doesn't have to, see, this is where we have a block, I think, too, is we think, you know, well, are you calling me a sinner? And we get all puffed up with pride. Well, we're all sinners, number one. Yeah. But number two, we live in a world that feeds us t contaminated foods that you know blows contaminated gases up our nose i mean we've got there's all kinds of sins that are corporate sins that we're kind of under the umbrella yeah you know? yes so things happen things happen but the good news is is that god says that he will deliver you yeah. from these things that happened <laughs> you know so and that's where i put my hope and my trust is that you know uh, Psalm 107 says he sent his word and healed us and delivered us of our destructions. Yeah, so when yeah, we yeah. destroy ourselves with our ignorance and with our, uh, with our technology or whatever we've got, you know, our laziness and eating the wrong foods or whatever, or whatever our excuse is, you know, smoking, whatever we do, God says that, you know, he, he sent his word and healed us and delivered us of our destructions. Now, the key is this. You don't get delivered just because you say that scripture. Right. <laughs> you you got to you got to serve him with your whole heart. You got to get down and dirty with some serious worship and repentance of some things, and come clean with some stuff and say, okay, God, I see where I'm. I need to clean up some areas right here. Maybe okay, I have you know been on this journey of of eating this food that I know is bad for me. I, I've known it for a long time, but I just keep I like it. I yeah. like it, you know, yeah. <laughs> or smoking these cigarettes, but I like them, you know, whatever you do, yeah. you whatever know, it is, gotta whatever come clean. Is. Gotta come clean. we do in excess, whatever we do in excess that we should yeah. be doing. I think, yeah. Deborah, a lot of times people, um, it, first of all, they got to understand before they even start that God, it is his will to heal. Yes. We, we've got to understand that it's written in his word, his promises. Let me read this scripture. This scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, 
who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Now that's Psalm 103 too. Yes. And so look, I mean, you know, how can we, how can we as believers, and I've sat in churches and I've heard this over and over and over. Well, you know, God must have put this on me. So, so let's just start there, Deborah, because some people feel like God just put it on them. Mm -hmm. But listen, God's word is clear. Jesus said, I came to give life and life more abundantly. Yes. He said, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. So we have to get our thinking right there too. God does not put disease on you especially yeah. believers. He does not. His word says, I will not put all these diseases on you. It's in, um, uh, 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 here it is, Exodus 15, 26. If yeah. you will diligently listen to my voice, the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes and give yeah. ear to his commands and keep all his statutes, mm -hmm. I will put none of these diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians because I am the Lord, your healer. So Amen. Deborah, right there, Amen. God is making a distinction between the believers in this world and the non-believers. That's right. He's promising to the believer, I'm your healer. Yes. To the non-believer, he's saying, you don't listen to my statutes. You don't follow my ways. You don't acknowledge my will. I'm not your healer. That's right. And I think that's really, really important for people to understand because sometimes people say, well, I didn't get healed. Yeah. So they're angry at God. Yes. But they ignore the fact that they did not follow his commands. They did not obey his voice. They did not believe his word, mm -hmm. but they're mad because they did not get healed. Yes, yes. You know, and, and I'm, sometimes I think that, you know, when you're teaching things like this, it can really rub people the wrong way because they, they've been through some things and they've already put it in a box of that was God's will or, you know, whatever. And God takes all things and works them for good. He takes what yeah. was never evil and he, he makes something good out of it. You know, death in general is not God's will period. So death is the result of sin in the Garden of Eden. So, you know, God has made a remedy for death, and that is life eternal. That's heaven as we know of it in our minds today, but God makes a way of escape. And so for us to put something in a box just because it happened to us, it does not necessarily mean that that was God's will. Uh, I mean, it, it depends on how you look at it. I mean, everything, everything is God's will. If you look at it that way, because I mean, he allows the devil, why does he allow the devil to even be here? Why does he just like say poof and the devil's gone? You know what I mean? So, you know, but, but, but when you, when you really divide the two between the, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, and you begin to see that we're in a, a battle, we're in a war here. And so whose side are we going to be on? And, you know, and I say, Lord, I want to be on your team. I want to be on your side. I want to believe your word no matter what happens no matter what happens. no matter what okay let me let's let's go to this question um uh someone asked i won't give the name why does some not get healing when they ask in the name of jesus mm -hmm. because he said ask and you shall receive mm -hmm. now the scripture she's referring to is march uh, uh matthew 7 7 Ask and it'll be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and it'll be open. So, you know, some people, Deborah, we have to acknowledge mm -hmm. it's not a faith issue, but but why does some live and some die? That's an important question, especially those believers mm -hmm. who stand in faith and believe that, believe in healing, but they still do not get healed. So I think we need to address that question. Do you have anything you want to say about that first? Yes. I, I do, and it's very complicated, and there's no way that I can address all points in this one Facebook Live, but I'll give you just a few highlights, and there's no, I'm, I'm not looking at notes, this is just off the cuff, okay? So, you know, first of all, only God knows the heart, okay? Yeah. I can say what I believe, but my heart tells the truth about what I believe. So, in other words, I can believe in Jesus, and I can still, in fact, I can show you in 1 Corinthians 10, where God, you know, 
uh, gave everybody the same spiritual water to drink and the same spiritual food to eat, but they died in the wilderness because they didn't obey him, you know, so I can believe in Jesus and I can still, you know, not receive my healing because it's not really about believing in Jesus. It's really more about what do you believe about Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus is the healer and that he wants to, he wants to heal you? Yes. That's where it kind of shifts a little bit. So, you know, and here's the thing, a lot of people, I think before they get sick, and I, and I know this is very tough for some people to hear when they've been through certain things, I understand that, but, and I can't hit all the points of it, so I'm just going to hit some highlights, but I think, um, you know, before people get, get deathly sick, they have their belief system in, in their little box, their little church box that they've already built their belief system in, and they may have their belief system as in, if God wants to heal me, he will. Okay, well, see, I, that's not the way I operate. Okay, I, and then when they get sick, though, with a death sentence, then they try to shift it from if God wants to heal me to God, please heal me. Oh, God, God, heal you know. And so, and so you're trying, you're shifting your belief system at a moment of crisis versus building your belief system from the ground up. I mean, and not that you can't shift it in a moment of crisis. You certainly can. You certainly can. But the thing is this, is that God sees the heart. We don't see the heart. So when I can tell you that I'm believing for a certain thing, I can tell you that I'm believing for my finances to change. I can tell you that I'm believing for my health to change. I can tell you that, I, you know, but, but what am I really inside really, really, really confident about? Or am I you know, really not confident at all about it and really not sure if I really even believe it. You know, I just want to believe it because I don't want to be sick or I don't want to die or whatever. That's number one. Number two is, of course, there's elements. You know, um, we live in a fallen world. There is elements of pollution. There's elements of polluted food. There's all kinds. There's so many factors that go into, you know, our healing. Mm -hmm. And so while God is able to override all of that, Absolutely override all of it. And that's where my belief is. Yeah. You know, um, I think that each person has their own uh, place that they are with the Lord. We're all on a journey. We're all on a journey about our, our belief system with the word of God. Okay. And so as we go through that journey, we learn life lessons. We learn things, you know, and, um, and I think that to, <sighs> you know, my dad died when he was 53 of, of cancer. Okay. And I prayed for him, him to be healed. And I was a baby Christian at the time, but I believed in healing. I believed in healing and I prayed for him to be healed, but he did not get healed. He did not get healed. Now I will tell you that he was not a believer in healing. He wanted to be healed. He wanted to be healed, but he didn't believe in healing. Um, you know, so, I mean, he was get he was trying to receive his healing from the doctors but as far as from God, he didn't really believe, but, but I did believe, mm -hmm. I did believe. And so when my father died, I went through a process of a couple of years to where I was shaken in my belief system. I was shaken and I had to re, I had to recalculate. I had to go back to the word. I had to go back to what does the Bible say and why did this happen? And, you know, how can I go about my life in the future with what I believe versus standing on that moment in time and basing all my belief off of that one moment in time, because it didn't turn out the way that I thought it would, you know? So, um, and it was a process. I mean, I, I had to get over it. It was, it was tough. It was painful, mm -hmm. you know, and there's other painful journeys that I've gone through. You've gone through, we've all gone through, you know, but the bottom line is this God's word is true and it doesn't matter what happens in my life. God's word is still true. Absolutely. And if he says that he's the healer, then he is the healer. And whether I get healed now or I get healed then, I will get healed. Yeah. Whether I'm on the other side of eternity or this side of eternity, I will get healed. But I just believe because I know his character that he wants us to be healed in this life and in the life to come. His word says that, that Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. And he gives us life in this life and in the life to come. So, you know, um, God did not create us to be, uh, to be broken. He created us to be whole. He created us to be ambassadors for the kingdom to be, you know, but, but no matter how our lives pan out, you know, he's still good. And if we do believe in him as our Lord and Savior, we're still healed. So there's really no, no reason to get an attitude about it. 
it's really more of just to say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Help me to get my belief system up so that I can live in the here and now for the people that are alive around me right now so that they can be all that God's called them to be right now. I can't change the past. I can only believe for the now and the future. That's where I'm at right now. Yes. And Deborah, I think that sometimes when you, when you first get a bad report, Mm -hmm. You know, you, you kind of have to decide how you're going to walk through it. Yes. Because if you get a bad report, you can, you can give in. Yeah. And just, just accept whatever comes your way. Mm -hmm. Or you can decide, I'm going to fight this and I'm going to fight it by faith. Uh, or you can just, you can just, you know, you can just do, do nothing and let things happen. My dad, when he was, I, I don't know, uh, 55, he had a heart attack and he lived 30, 30 plus years after that massive heart attack. We were told constantly, be prepared to bury your father. Mm -hmm. I watched my dad. He, he fell on the floor in the basement um, and, and his heartbeat went down to 18 beats per minute. The EMTs came, they said he, he should be brain dead. This makes no sense. He can't make it through. He lived 11 years after that incident. And I said, dad, what were you thinking when you were laying on that floor? And he said, well, I just prayed to God. And I said, God, I'm not ready to go yet. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes it's a matter of what you really believe in your heart. Do you believe God can get you off of that floor when all of your vital signs says something else? Yeah. You know, when everything around you says this is not working for your best interest. Mm -hmm. And see, I think that when you make up your mind to base your belief system, mm -hmm. not on man's religion, that's mm -hmm. where we get screwed up in our head, not mm -hmm. what the church's some mainstream de denominations are, are teaching. You got to look at the word. Yes. What does the word say? Yeah. Because Old Testament and New Testament, Jesus said, God said, I'm, I'm the healer. Then Jesus comes forth. He lays hands on the sick and they got, they get healed. Mm -hmm. So if someone is going through a, 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 getting that bad report, let's say the first thing you should do is say, wait a minute, I'm going to, I'm going to seek out mm -hmm. advice from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Some people die because it's their time to die. You know, the word of God says that there, there's a time to, to live and a time to die. Mm -hmm. Some people get sick because they're in sin. So you need to investigate that. Am I in sin? The word of God tells us if you take communion in an unworthy manner, Deborah, it says that's why some of you are sick and that's some right. of you are that's right. asleep, meaning dead. Yes. So, you know, you got to look at your life. Did you take communion in an unworthy manner? If you did, you repent quickly, repent yes. quickly. Yes. I worked with a woman one time that she, she had, um, her, a family who, who did not walk with the Lord and she took communion at, at most of her life, not even believing in Jesus. Hmm. And she, she had, um, um, Oh, she had uh, fibromyalgia for like 30 years. Mm -hmm. She was a registered nurse, Deborah. Mm -hmm. One prayer, one confession, and she was totally healed. Wow. One prayer. So, yes. so sometimes we've got to look, we've got to do some introspection. What? Introspection. That's, in, yes. Am I carrying bitterness? Am I carrying, because bitterness will rot the bone. It'll it bring sickness on you. Rot the bone, yes. It'll bring sickness. Unforgiveness will bring sickness on you. Yes. The word of God tells us that. That's right. Um, it, you know, it tells us that we'll be outwitted by Satan. Mm -hmm. you, we get pulled into his schemes Mm -hmm. We get outwitted and we don't even, we don't even register in our head. The supernatural is attached to the natural. And it's what you believe in your mind is going to determine what you walk through. Yeah. So when the word of God is presented to you and you're, you've been given a bad report, then you need to turn to the Lord and say, okay, Lord, do I have sin in my life? Do I have unforgiveness? Have I taken communion in an unworthy manner? When you repent and confess everything you can repent and re confess, there's people that I know have personally been healed of cancer because of, because of repenting from bitterness. Mm -hmm. 
So, so you, you know, if you're listening out there and you, you're walking through an illness, the first thing I can tell you is please, please, please search your heart and have God say, God, show me, show me, search my heart, God. Let God show you what is actually in your heart because you got to get rid of the sin, first of all, before you even touch healing, you got to get rid of the sin. That's right. And then you got to, you got to check your belief system. Do you really believe? Because even Jesus, when he walked through Nazareth, uh, Nazareth, the word of God says he could only lay hands on a few and heal a few that were sick. He couldn't do many miracles there. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of their unbelief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect God to heal you if you don't believe he's a healer. That's right. That's right. You know, I want to bring up uh, two other points. One is, and I'm going to give two testimonies real quick. But one is going to be about intercession and the other one is going to be about just your belief system. So my grandmother, who was uh, 103 years old, she'll be 104 in June, um, when she was probably 80, um, she was diagnosed with leukemia. And the doctor told her that she, there was no sense in getting a blood transfusion, whatever, because she was too old and she'd probably be dead in five years. <laughs> she said, don't you tell me what to do. Only my God in heaven knows how long I'm going to live. Well, she's 103 today and she's perfectly fine. Okay. She does not have leukemia anymore. So, so and she's ready to go now. Okay. She's ready to go. But back then she was vibrant and, and totally just, I mean, she lived in her own house until she was like 98 years old, drove her own car, bought her own groceries. I love her own it. You know, so, but she, she immediately said, when that doctor said, you've got leukemia, you're too old for blood transfusion, just live it out. You're, you're, you know, you've lived a good long life. Okay. So Ra, so Ra, she said, don't you tell me how long I'm going to live. Only my God. That's what she told him. Yeah. Okay. So then that was my first testimony. My second testimony is my father, uh, excuse me, my father-in-law, my father-in-law, my father-in-law, uh, he's deceased now, but many years ago when he was 70 years old, um, he was taking blood thinner. He was on, is it Coumadin? I think you say. And so, uh, but he was also an alcoholic. He had lived, you know, kind of a, a ruckus life. Um, and there was just a lot of brokenness in the family tree, a lot of brokenness. Um, but anyway, so he was on blood thinner. He was 70 and um, he had a ruptured aorta. So he was rushed to the hospital. They did surgery on him. He was bleeding to death because he was on that blood thinner. So they packed his chest with gauze. They sewed him up and they came out into the lobby and they said, I'm sorry. We did all that we know how to do. Um, he's bleeding to death and you might want to go in and say your goodbyes. That's pretty much what they said. So I was a baby Christian. This is years ago. This is the early nineties. And, um, but I had read that Jesus was a healer and I just happened to believe it. <laughs> and so anyway, I'd never seen Jesus heal anybody, but I thought, well, you know, I read it. You know, but at the same time, I had my fleshly thoughts about the situation because I'd also read that, you know, we were promised 70 years. And so I thought, well, he's 70 years old, so it's probably his time to go, you know. And then I thought, well, you know, he's been an alcoholic. He brought it on himself. I mean, you know, you, you just can't yeah. fix something that you just brought on yourself. I mean, you know, God might not want to fix that because he's teaching them a lesson. I, I mean, I had all these fleshly thoughts, you know. And so I'm sitting there in the waiting area and none of our family members at the time were believers, none of them, including my husband. And uh, as I'm sitting there, the Holy Spirit starts talking to me and the Holy Spirit says, I don't want any to perish, but for all to come to everlasting life. Well, I started thinking, is my father-in-law even saved? Number one, I mean, yes, he was a church goer, but he didn't live like he was saved. So was he saved? Mm -hmm. Question mark. So if he's not saved, that means he's getting ready to go to hell. Okay. Then the second thing the Holy Spirit told me was this, the Holy Spirit took me to, and I had never read this before at this time. It was Psalm 107 that says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them of their destructions. Why? So that they would praise the name of the Lord, their God. And so, and it says it like three or four times in Psalm 107. And what the Holy Spirit showed me was that God would send his word and even heal the person who brought it upon himself. And so I, the way I look at this is that means the smoker, the drinker, yes, the yes. homosexual, yes. whatever. Okay. So, you know, and so here I was in a place of intercession for him because he was in a coma. He could not pray for himself. He was out. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but the key point for my intercession was this, if he was not a born again Christian, which I didn't believe that he was, he was going to go to hell on my watch, mm -hmm. on my watch. 
And so I began to pray for him and I began to tell all the unbelievers in the waiting room about those scriptures I found. And of course, when people are desperate, they'll believe anything, yeah. you know, so, so, um, so, and then I, some pastors came in from our little church that I was going to at that time who really didn't believe in supernatural healing. Um, and they said, well, can we pray for y'all? And I said, yeah, I want you to pray for him to be healed. I just read in the Bible that God would heal. Him. And so they were like, bee, 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 bee. but they prayed, they were scared, but they prayed. And I'm telling you what, in 30 days, he was in a coma for 30 days and God raised him up and he lived another 15 years Beautiful. and he served the Lord. He served the Lord. So you see, God, God doesn't want anybody to perish, but for all to come to our life. And so many times as Christians, we put things in a box because yeah. we, because we love them and we want to believe a certain thing. But the thing is, you're not going to be there for your loved one when they face God and they're naked before God and, and, and they can't go back. You can't, you're not going to be there to say, Oh, I know they're saved. I saw them when they gave their life to the Lord. No, they either are or they aren't. That's right. That's they either right. are or they aren't. So do we love people enough to pray that they would live and not die? Maybe because they're young, maybe because they've made mistakes or, or maybe because we know deep, deep, deep down in our heart that they did not live the life of a Christian. Yeah. We know that. Yep. You know, and so instead of like washing it over and say, oh, yeah, well, they did go to church. I mean, I don't know, but, you know, I believe they're saved. Well, it doesn't matter what you believe. Mm -hmm. it, it, it only matters what's real. That's right. So ask the father, ask the father, what's the father's heart? Father, what is your heart on this? Yep. Father, is this something that the devil's trying to do to take this person into eternity? Yeah. Away from yeah. yeah. Or is this something that is a natural process, Lord, that's going to happen to all of us one day because of sin and broken humanity you know so ask the father and then pray according to the father's will that's very 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 important yes okay deborah ba uh, battle she asked this question okay my question is saying it and proclaiming it out loud to other biblical uh, others biblical and necessary for it to happen or can it be private just between her and god and, you know, Deborah, I was thinking about this because the, the, the Bible tells us this. I think you, you, there's a little bit of both here. Mm -hmm. I think you, the Bible says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well, and the Lord will raise them up. And if they've sinned, they will be forgiven. So James is laying out a very clear thing we're supposed to first go to the elders of the church. Now, here's the dilemma. I was in this very dilemma. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like you said, some churches don't believe. They say they do, but they don't lay on hands. They don't pray. You know, they don't expect. They might pray and ask, but they don't really expect. And so you have to be careful where you go to even have the elders lay hands. It might not be your church. It might be a church next door to your church. Mm -hmm. You need to know what they believe and what they expect. Because if they, if you go and the elders don't really expect, then that's not the, that's not the prayer that God is going to honor. God is going to honor the prayer prayed in faith. That's called the prayer of faith. Mm -hmm. so so you have to be sure where you go so then the second thing I would say to, De to Deborah's question is you can go directly to God and pray and expect and believe and you may not want to tell everyone I know when I was sick I had a very small group of people that I trusted mm -hmm. enough to share my pain with I didn't put it out there for everybody because everybody doesn't pray by faith a lot of people may pray you right into the ground if you want. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so for her, I would say, you know, be wise about it. Mm -hmm. Go to the elders of a church that honestly lay on hands, anoint with oil, and pray the prayer of faith, and believe, Deborah. Yes. Yes. Believe. Yes. Yes. You know what? And and I mean, I I hate to sound, you know, oh. This is good to people that don't understand this. They, they might kind of go Rrr! when I say this, but this is me personally. This is me personally. You know, if I am, if I get a, a death sentence report on my life or one of my loved ones lives, I don't want somebody praying over them. This is just me. God, if it be your will, 
Yes. I want them praying over me with faith, believing. And so I'm very particular about who I would allow to pray over me. Absolutely. And, and not only that, but I also don't believe in, in, uh, in perpetrating the devil's report. In other words, like I don't believe in telling, a lot of people love sympathy and they love to get on Facebook and tell about the devil's report. Oh, I just got this report. Y'all please pray for me. I don't believe in that no. because I, I believe in God's report. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that I go through that people don't even know I go through. Yeah. They don't even know it because, you know, I don't want, I don't want everybody, the naysayers and the mourners naysayers. and the criers and the, you know, the people that really wish bad things on you to start with. <laughs> I don't want any of that going on around me. I just yeah. want, there's just a very small handful full, full of people who I know and Robin, you're one of them. You are that I could trust with my life yeah. to pray and care about me because you really know the father's heart and you would pray the prayer of faith. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and even that I still, and this is just me. I mean, everybody's different, but for me, I just don't even like to even mention some things by name to even perhaps Robin until I have prayed it through and sat down with God and said, you know what, Lord, I give this to you and I'm not received like my grandmother. <laughs> you don't tell me how long I'm going to live or you don't tell me how long my child or my husband or whatever. And so you just don't, you don't take everything at face value. I mean, I believe in doctors and nurses. I believe that they see the facts yeah. and I know the facts are real, but I also believe the truth is more real than the facts. Yeah. So God's word is the truth. And I try to keep my mouth shut about repeating the facts. And I try to try to keep my mouth, um, talking the truth um, and not necessarily looking for pity. That's something I had to learn through a lot of, a lot of life of being a Christian because I used to want pity. I mean, I think humans <laughs> want pity in general, they do, you know, yeah. and God had to show me that I've got to stop asking for pity. Yeah. I've got to be a warrior. I've got to be strong. So, so yes, if, if you, if you need, and I think it's good to go to the elders of the church because the Bible clearly says that. I think that is, is very important because some people, and I'm not saying I wouldn't need it as well because I love it, but I'm just saying some people that's really all you have. You've got to grab hold of those people with faith and that's yeah. good. You go to those people and you get them to pray over you. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you may be able to just press in yourself and pray and, and fast yourself and get on your knees yourself and just get in that, in that closet and shut the door, you know, yeah. and what you ask in secret, God rewards openly. So, yes. so that's a, that's a, a question that has many answers to it. And I think, I hope that we covered some of those answers to that question. Yeah. Well, one thing that I love you said, because when you, when you repeat a bad report, mm -hmm. the word of God says, all the devil needs is a, a foothold. Mm -hmm. All he needs is just a little toe in the door mm -hmm. and you're agreeing at the, there's power in agreement. Mm -hmm. So when you're agreeing with a bad report, I have this mm -hmm. that's coming into agreement with the very thing Satan is sending against you. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you do have to be wise. It's not, we're not saying name it and claim it. We're not mm -hmm. saying stick your head in the mud and call yourself healed when you're not. But what we are saying is don't give the devil a foothold. That's right. Declare the word, declare the word, don't declare the problem. That's right. That's, that's, that's hard for people because you're right. A lot of people want sympathy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, need comfort from other people. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have comfort from God, Deborah. I'm like, yes, hey, I'm going to take the father up first. Yeah. I'm going to see what he says first. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to walk by faith and believe and trust. And this is, I want to, you know, we've got a few more minutes, but I, I want to say, God is sovereign. So why don't people get healed? You know, whether you get healed here or get healed there, mm -hmm. the true walk of faith, Deborah, mm -hmm. is when someone doesn't get healed mm -hmm. and they still praise God. That's right. Yep. You talk about power. That's power in the spirit realm. Yes, it is. And here's the thing. I always say, I always say this, you know, I would rather die believing God that I'm going to be healed than to live believing God that I'm going to die. Yes. So I think it's a beautiful thing to be, you know, on your deathbed and be believing God for healing all the way to the bitter end because, because you don't die. You walk yeah. out of this body and you walk into eternity. So yes. there's yes. nothing wrong with believing God you know, for everything. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think we put too much pressure on ourselves 
to think, well, what are people going to think if we don't get healed or if my loved one doesn't get healed? It doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what people think. We just need to hunker down and pray and believe God and trust our daddy, our father, you know. Um, Dan asked this question. Well, the statement, he said, uh, I've asked God to cure my diabetes and psoriasis. I still have both. And Deborah, I want people to clearly understand because we do teach a balanced biblical word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Apostle Paul himself mm -hmm. prayed about an affliction, a, an illness. Yes. And God said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And why did Paul have that, that illness? The word of God, Paul himself said, I had it so that I wouldn't get puffed up. In my own revelation. That's <laughs> so, right. That's sometimes, right. Sometimes, you know, we don't understand why we've got what we've got, but mm -hmm. we have to acknowledge that sometimes God is walking us through suffering. Uh, even Jesus had learned obedience from what he suffered. That's what Hebrews tells us. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God allows us to walk through sickness to keep that affliction just like he did for Apostle Paul. Does that mean God doesn't love you? No, not at all. It means that God is working through you, something he needs to work through you. And suffering is part of the Christian experience. Mm -hmm. We don't like it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to preach it. But mm -hmm. the truth is, sometimes God says, I need you to learn something here. And you're going to walk through a time of suffering because I want you to become more like me. Mm -hmm. And the word of God tells us as we move from glory to glory, part of that moving from glory to glory is because we have walked through suffering. We understand pain. We empathize. We have compassion because we have walked through it ourselves. So then we can turn around as the word says and minister to others from the same thing that, that we walk through. Yes, yes. But, I, you know, also, I think if I'm not mistaken, Paul said, I've asked the Lord these three times. And then he finally got an answer from the Lord about, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, why. And so my encouragement to the gentleman that asked this question is to keep praying and keep asking yeah. until you either get healed or you get an answer. Yeah. So because God will tell you, I think that God will tell us the reasons for things. Absolutely. We will just listen. Yeah. But so many times we don't want to hear. We don't want to know the answer, you know. And so um, but he will tell us if we will listen. And Deborah, in that same scripture with Apostle Paul, he said this this was from a messenger of Satan. He did. So, so Paul knew where his sickness came from. He That's knew right. that it came he from He didn't say God. it was from God. He, he did not say it. Yeah. He knew it was, and, it, and he, God allowed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God mm -hmm. allowed it so that he wouldn't be puffed up. Mm -hmm. But he said, my, my grace is sufficient. Uh, my power is made perfect mm -hmm. in weakness. And I'm telling you, Deborah, when you're facing a life sentence, when, when man is saying you, there's no hope, Mm -hmm. You are looking for God's perfect power in your point of weakness. Yes, yes, yes. That's what you hold on to is his power. Yes. Not our power, but his power. Yes. And, and, you know, then that's the other thing. I think sometimes people get mad when the answer is no. Apostle Paul got a no. Yeah. He got a no. He did not get, he did not get his healing. Mm -hmm. but yet he learned through that time. And I think that's what God wants us to learn through our suffering. Mm -hmm. He wants us to walk through it and still be able to praise him. If you don't get your healing here, you'll get your healing there. Are you okay with that? Or are you going to be mad at God? And sometimes that's what happens with believers. I prayed, my child died. Now I'm, I'm done with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of realizing God has a perfect plan He's always right, Deborah. Mm -hmm. He's always right. His decisions are always perfect. If you can hold on to that fact, if you can hold on that he is sovereign, he does know what's best. He's working all things together for our good and for his glory. If we hold on to that, then that gets us through these times of pain and suffering and sickness. Yes. But yes. we have to acknowledge where the sickness come from. It's not yeah. from God. It's from a messenger of Satan. A messenger from Satan. And again, you know, for me, the way I live my Christian faith is, is I want to know, in other words, I don't want to just 
get through something and and just say, you know, okay, well, you know, God's let me go through this because of whatever. What I want to know, I want God to speak to me and reveal to me yes. the deep truths about the situation, the deep truths about my spiritual condition, and the deep truths about, you know, maybe my loved one's spiritual spiritual condition or whatever, so that I, I want to learn. So yeah. it's like I don't want to just brush it off as saying, oh, that was God's will. You know, I want to to learn from things because if you read your Bibles from Genesis to Revelation, you know, I think all of the the word in the Old Testament especially is to learn. We yeah. learn from what people did wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and he clearly tells us you did this wrong and this is what happened, you know. And so we need to we need to do the same thing in our own lives, you know. Um, as painful as it is, it is painful. It's painful, yes. but you know, but that's how we, that's how we mature in our faith is when we ask God the hard questions and be really willing to receive the hard answers Absolutely. and then to, you know, and then to grow from that, to grow from that and don't get mad at God. Yes. Don't get mad. Yeah. And that we can look at apostle Paul. He had that conversation with God. God did explain to him. Mm -hmm. God did explain. So God will, someone ask, uh, can you lose your healing? Okay, well, <laughs> um, I don't think God wants you to lose your healing. Um, I think you probably could just yep. because the enemy is crafty and he knows how to come back in with lies and we believe lies, you know, and so I think you, you can. But I think that if we, you know, really believe that God loves us, if we really believe that God wants the best for us and he cares about us, body, soul, and spirit, I believe that we that we should not lose our healing. I believe that, that God does not want us to lose our healing because God is, I mean, Hey, he's God. And when yeah. he heals you, you're yeah. healed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're yeah. healed. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so the only way you would really lose your healing, you wouldn't be losing it. You'd basically be taking it back. Yeah. You'd be saying, I want it back. And it's kind of, sort of, in that yeah. you, you kind of turn your belief system from the fact that God has loved you so much that he has completely, totally healed you. Yes. You know, and then you start to entertain the what ifs. So I thought when, when I saw this question, I thought of Hezekiah. And if you think back in the Old Testament, Hezekiah, uh, you know, the prophet came to Hezekiah and he said, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. And Hezekiah went into prayer and prayed diligently and asked the Lord to heal him. And the Lord added 15 years to his life. That's what the word says. Yes. But then Hezekiah got very prideful. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says this, and he almost, because of pride, he almost lost his healing. Mm. Mm. And so see, sometimes we don't give God enough credit. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he got prideful, you know, he was, he was, he was proud of all the riches that he had. And he was, he brought everyone in, look at my, my, what I have accomplished in life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. look, when you're facing illness, you better realize, you better realize that mm -hmm. you are in the palm of God's hand. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can't overlook that. You can't, you can't steal the glory from God, in other words. No, that's right. You know, I, going back to that story about Hezekiah, you know, it was the prophet that told him he was going to mm -hmm. die, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and yes, the yes. thing is, and this is the thing, most of us, you gotta, you gotta put this in real life in your real life, how you would think. Okay. So if, if the preacher or the doctor or the nurse or the x-ray or whatever comes to you, and I'm going to say, that's like the prophet. So yeah. to speak, in that it's, it's, it's being prophesied to you that you are going to die. Okay. Then what do we do? We're like, Oh, well, God said it. You, you know, I guess I'm going to, you know, well, no, Hezekiah, he turned his face to the wall and he cried out to the Lord, you know, so he didn't just because the prophet said it, you know, it's like God, God did something different. God did a miracle, you know? So yes, God did say that you're going to die yep. through the prophet. But then God also said, no, I'm going to let you live longer because he repented. So, you know, I think that so many times we receive that negative report um, as being the final testament of everything, you know, and we've got to understand that, you know, there's a lot that can happen as we repent and we turn our face to the wall and we cry out to God and we just really get down and dirty with our faith and yeah. just, you know, let God put the x-ray machine on our hearts and our minds and our belief system and just do a work in us. Now, you know, um, 
I'm going to say something about my father-in-law and my father, because the difference in those two stories is this. My father was not in a coma. My father was awake. He was alive. He was, he had cancer and he was very sick, but he had his mental faculties. Okay. So I was able to minister to my father and to tell him about healing, but he did not want to believe in healing of that nature. Now he did believe that he was going to get his healing from the doctors and nurses because he wanted to live. He didn't want to die. He did not want to die. Um, but he didn't believe in supernatural healing. My, my father-in-law was in a coma. He had no choice in the matter. He was out and he was going to die. Okay. And so there was no witnessing to him. It was intercessory prayer. Yeah. So, so God uses different situations in different ways. And, and we just need to learn how to, you know, navigate with the Holy Spirit. And then, like I said, with my dad, my dad died. My, my father, my husband's father lived. My father died, you know, two totally different stories, but you've got to, you've got to learn and ask questions from God about each story so that you can live the future days that you have on this earth with understanding of God's word and being an ambassador for the kingdom of God and not poo-pooing on God's word because of something that happened to you, basically. Yes. yes. Uh, the word of God says this, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. Mm -hmm. It will be healing to your flesh mm -hmm. and refreshment for your body. Amen. So Deborah, I'm telling you, that's a powerful statement, isn't it, from the Lord? Mm -hmm. Because when we look at our lives, are we, do we truly fear the Lord? That's the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to turn away from our evil, the evil that's in our own heart? Are, are we willing to submit to God's leadership? Because if we do, if we submit to his word, it's a promise in his word. There's going to be healing for our flesh. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yes, it is. Yes, it it's is. Powerful and refreshment yeah. for our bodies. Yeah. So it all really comes back to what do we believe? Yes, yes, yes. So let's I, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. And, you know, and, and again, for me personally, because I can't, I, you know, I told my Sunday school class this past week, I said, you know, you can't, you can't have my faith. Yes. Uh, you know, when you, when you're in a crisis situation and you're faced with a, a horrible report, you can't say, well, Deborah said, or Robin said, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you got to have your own faith. You know, we can share our faith. We can share the word of God. We can share how we believe the word of God, you know, but when the rubber meets the road, you've got to have your own faith and you've got to be able to say the word says, because the devil came even to try to tempt Jesus yes. into being in fear and G and he used the word, the devil used the word. And you see, if the devil will use the word against Jesus, why wouldn't he use it against a Christian? Hello, <laughs> wake up. You know, so there are many times that I think Christians get twisted word and they believe it, yeah. you know, and so we've got to understand to know how to say, yeah, but the word also says, yeah. you know, and, and I told my class this past week, you know, don't put a period where there should be a comma. Yes. You know, so many people are putting God in a box and they're putting a period there. Well, the word says this period. Okay. Well, the word also says this comma. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So you need to learn how to rightly divide the word of God and put all the parts of the puzzle together yeah. so that you can navigate through this, uh, you know, through the devil's schemes and plots and all the stuff that he throws at us uh, with the pure truth of the word of God, the pure truth of the word of God, because that's where the power is. Absolutely. The the Absolutely. Yes. Jesus said, daughter, your faith yes. healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Oh, yes. I just love that. Yes, so absolutely. Let's pray for our viewers, uh, our people, the friends that have joined us today just for healing. And um, uh, would you like to close in prayer? Yeah, I want to make an announcement first and then we will pray. Oh, um, we have our retreat coming up March 27th, 28th and 29th. And it's, uh, we do have an extension on our deadline until March the 12th to register. It's at Lake Jinaluska. If you're listening to this message today and you need a touch from the Lord, you need to be at this retreat. You know, God will provide for you to get there if you'll step out in faith and you'll trust him. You need to sign up. You've got till March the 12th to sign up. There's going to be powerful 
word and this retreat is called God's Got This. And we're going to just really impart faith through the word of God to you so that you can make it and not only make it, but be victorious in whatever you're going through. That's number one. Number two is I'm going to do another teaching tonight at eight o'clock PM Eastern time on healing. In fact, Robin and I are going to do lots of teachings. I'm going to do some on Tuesday nights. She's going to do some on Tuesday nights. We're going to really try to cover as much of this as we can, because I think that there's no way to answer all the questions in one sitting because the devil has put such a blanket on the church that the church is confused. And so we are going to tackle this by just continuing to teach on it until we bring some understanding. And I think it's going to take viewers, some of the viewers, not all, but some of the viewers watching every single broadcast to be able to get all of their questions answered and get their, their, their faith settled, get their faith settled. So they can just say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, Lord, I believe. And, and hold on to the horns of the altar and say, Lord, I will not let go until you bless me. So let's pray. Yeah. Okay. Heavenly Father, Lord, we worship you. We praise you. We honor you. I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha. You mm -hmm. are our healer. It's not what you do. It's who you are. Yeah. It's who you are. It's your character. It's your nature. It's your will. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're good and you give good gifts to your children, Lord. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus came to show us the will of the Father, Lord, and he said, I will. I thank you, Father, that you sent your word and healed us and you delivered us from all of our own destructions, Lord. Yes. I thank you, Lord, that as we bless the Lord with all of our soul, Lord, and we don't forget the benefits Lord, that you heal all of our diseases, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you wish that we would be in health and prosper even as our soul prospers, Lord. I thank you, Father, that from Genesis to Revelation, Lord, that you show us time after time after time after time after time, Lord, of your supernatural healing, Lord. Yes. And I pray, God, that our viewers, Lord, would focus on the goodness of God and not on the curse of the situation. Yes, we do read about the curse of the situation in the Bible. We read about those times in the Old Testament, but that does not mean that that's what God wants. Yes. It means that's what happened because mankind rebelled, because mankind re didn't repent, because mankind would not agree with God. So God, I say in the name of Jesus, Lord, help us to agree with you, Lord. Yes. Help us, Lord. To, I pray that the veil will be removed from our eyes, Lord, that we can see your word with clarity, Lord, that we can believe your word and not pray with our fingers crossed, but pray with our arms open wide, believing you and thanking you because you're a good God. You're a good father and you give good gifts to your children, yes. Lord. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father, for doing what only you can do through these Facebook Bible study times, Lord. And God, I just thank you, Lord, for the viewers that are coming on right now, the ones that are coming on later, those that will come on and join different studies, Lord. I pray, God, that you will do a mighty work in their life and heal them, Lord. And heal them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Deborah. That was exciting. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad everybody could jump on and we will see you friends again shortly. Have a yes. great day. It's going to take me a minute to figure out how to get off of this because I don't even know how I'm on it. So uh, this is at the bottom. <laughs> well, it, it, it does. It only has me on Facebook. It doesn't have me on the Zoom thing. So Lord Jesus, show me what to do. So those of you that are watching, be patient with me because I don't know how to get out of this Zoom because it didn't give me that option of that. So Robin, uh, tell me tell me when I disappear. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to uh, end the meeting. Okay, do that. End the meeting and see if it goes away. That's okay. great. Thank you.